everybody. Welcome. Sorry we had a, just a few minute delay here, ironing out some technical difficulties. My name is Lisa Jarrett, and I am the co-founder and co-director of Chaos Mocha, which is the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School Museum of Contemporary Art. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague, Carol Fletcher, co-founder and co-director Amanda Lee Evans, who's one of our primary collaborators, and a group of college student participants from Portland State University. Um, I'm also joined by the artist Paula Wilson, who will be giving us um, a wonderful experience this morning. Um, a very warm welcome to Beth Bolger's fourth grade students from Dr. MLK Junior School, who are uh, watching this presentation via our YouTube live channel, which you are also welcome to join. Um, I am going to introduce Paula and then turn it over to her. And um, there'll be an opportunity for questions uh, at the end of the talk and the conversation this morning. Uh, so feel free if you're watching this on our YouTube live channel to throw those questions in the chat. And we are monitoring that. We'll make sure that those questions get to Paula. Um, to our students that are watching um, from your homes. We miss you so much and we wish we could be in person with you. Um, but this is the way we were hoping we could begin to share, continue to share art with you this, this remote school year. Um, so Paula is here to launch our 2021 uh, virtual artist in residency program and lecture series. And Paula Wilson is a multimedia artist whose densely layered, colorful, and often monumental works utilize a variety of techniques, including painting, collage, sometimes they're filmic, installation-based works, and also print techniques. As a Black biracial woman born in Chicago, Illinois, and living in the American desert, Wilson's multifaceted work resists a singular viewpoint or way of being understood. Her layering of image, of pattern and materials acts as a visual metaphor for the complex stratum of histories and cultures, both real and imagined, that inform her work. So Paula uses all different kinds of techniques, layers things in different ways, and really tries to, right, tries to use those techniques to tell us something about the experience of being alive across complex histories um, and cultural backgrounds. Uh, Wilson is based in Carrizozo, New Mexico, where she is co-founder of the artist organizations MoMA Zozo and the Carrizozo Artist in Residency, or AIR program. Um, please join me in welcoming the artist Paula Wilson. Hello, everyone. Ah, it's so great to be here with you. And thank you for that very warm introduction, Lisa. And for the PSU students who are also with us. It's just uh, great to be in the mix. And as Lisa's saying, uh, if you have any questions or comments, like, wow, that's amazing. Go ahead and you know, put that in the chat and we can, we can call those. But during the talk too, to be able to just feel like I'm not just talking out into nowhere, that there are actually people on the other side of this it always feels really good. So. Don't be shy and in the fourth grade classroom, I'm sure that's that's possible too. And it's really exciting to, to have you guys here as well. So you find me here in our chicken room. This is, uh, this is we have five, four chickens and one rooster. Pretty cute, right? I'm gonna go ahead and switch my camera view so you can see better. So one thing that you'll see in my work and in my spaces is a real desire to mix art and life together. And what better way to illustrate that than, than these chickens who have been productive today already. Look at that. Beautiful, fresh eggs, ready for the taking. Now chickens, they like to roost at night on this platform. So at night when they go to sleep, they jump all the way up there and then they face this mural that I painted. Now this is facing 
out onto the street in Carrizozo, New Mexico. This is an old railroad town that was founded, this building was built in 1914. So I looked it up and if we were to go from KS Mocha all the way to Carrizozo, it's 1,515 miles. If you were walking, it would take you 20 days to walk straight and five days to bike and 24 hours if you were driving. This is our state flag, the Zia symbol, which is a sacred Zuni symbol. This building that we're in right now was an old hotel. This was kind of a lobby room where they would welcome people. Okay, time to say bye to the chickens. You guys got anything to say chickens? Okay, I think I'm gonna name the rooster king. So here we go on the tour. So this is another creature I'd like to introduce you to, our dog, Duchess. Say hi, Duchess. All right. She's a very good studio dog and she herds the chickens sometimes. Okay, there, she said hi, perfect. Oh, very good, very good. So a lot of times I like to just have my artwork existing within these spaces rather than wait to have my work shipped off to show in a museum. I like to hang it up in my spaces so that if we have visitors coming here, they can sort of experience it as if this place is a museum. Ah, now the rooster wants to say hi. So this is a work on fabric. I work a lot on textiles. I like the way that it, that it flows, the way that it hangs. I wanted this to be almost like a brick, a brick wall. But then if you have a brick wall that's made out of fabric, it sort of changes the, the solidness of the, of the wall, of the meaning of that. And it kind of becomes almost like a doorway that you, you could go through. And I like that symbolism of switching from something being a wall or a barrier to something being a doorway or a window. Okay, Duchess wants us to come through this door. These are mirrors that have been glued on to this door to create this figure. Now you're gonna also meet my partner, Mike Lag, who's a woodworker. And you'll see a lot of things made by him as well. Tear down the wall, tear down the divides between us. And then also here are a series of posters that I did when I was living in Chicago, when I was around 20. So half, half my lifetime ago, I made these and they, and I posted them all about the city and they're people who are looking for love and they're asking, they're asking for the things that they desire. Oh, who do we have here? Whoa. This is Mike. Hi guys. <laughs> Work my day. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah. What are you working on? Um, I'm uh, working on a screen door, actually. Um, in the the handle for the screen door it happens to be this carved piece of wood that uh, Paula uh, helped uh, create. <clears throat> and uh, it, it becomes the handle when I attach it to this, this door, which is, maybe you can't tell, 
screen door, but beautiful. Uh, that's one of the things I'm working on. I'm also making another stick bot, which uh, uh, Paul may have showed you already, but this is a kind of a big selfie stick. <laughs> so you guys might be able to tell that we have nice seamless integration of technology and the carpentry. So I have this this entity that we call a stick bot and I slide my phone into it and then it becomes like a tripod or a stand and that's what's helping me do this tour. Here's a print that I recently made in a wood frame. I wonder what you guys see there. What do you think that this figure has in their book? Is that an image of a flower? Maybe it also looks like an insect to you. I wonder what else is in that book. So as I was saying, this building used to be an old hotel. One of my grandchildren. <laughs> it's got a motor that uh, well, it, it makes it uh, try to uh, eat eat money. You can feed it a dollar bill, and this thing literally will um, gobble the dollar bill. It's called, this piece is called the money gobbler. <laughs> it's uh, it's getting some maintenance right now, or right, I'd show you how it can eat dollars. So this is a workshop now, but it's also a kind of strange playland. This is a pile of wood to make a bonfire, which we could make inside because, oh, I'm so happy to hear that it looks like a butterfly or a flower. That was exactly what I was going for. Look, it's the sky and there's another butterfly. This is a sculpture Mike and I made together. Maybe some of the PSU students feel like this reminds them of a James Chirrell work. See, we have a beautiful blue sky here in Carrizozo today. Now this is a butterfly wings that we made for a video performance. Thank you for letting us know the responses. Wow, that's so cool to hear. And this so you see all of these springs and wire and metal hanging here. I wonder if anybody can guess why we have all that. To make music? Something that they value collect, and uh, I'm 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 constructing this this fence that will I don't the chickens are going to come into this space, and uh, I'm I I don't want them to go into any further than than this area. So I didn't want to make a regular fence. <laughs> so I, I I chose to do this more uh, creative version, and it's a constant. It will be a constant kind of battle, I feel, because the pigeons will, uh, and the chickens will, will continue to outwit me probably, and I'll have to uh, 
continually update the fence on a regular basis. So some people guess that these are wind chimes and it does, it is really windy here in Carrizoza. So that's a good guess. And as Mike's explaining, because this area is so open to the elements, we have pigeons who come and roost in these little kind of holes between the floor. And then also there's this opening into the chicken room where we were. And so the chickens are gonna come in here. So this is gonna be a whole like bird atrium. And here's a mural that I drew in charcoal that we burned in the fire. And that's something that I'm gonna just keep working on and working on. It kind of reminds me of where the wild things are. So all of these wind chime like things keep the birds from going through into the inside space. It keeps them contained within this area. All right, well, let's continue on the tour. We're gonna stay in the hotel building. We're gonna go into a pretty darkened space through this curtain. See how rough this, this space is? It's so raw. It was abandoned. It was left with nobody living in it for 30 years. This is a kind of dollhouse model that Mike made. It's got a neat red light in it. It's hard to see. It's a little chair. There's a little toilet back there. So you can see that we believe that play is such an important part of making art. To be able to dream and imagine and then make the things real that you imagine, that's what keeps me going in the studio. That's what keeps me making art all the time. <laughs> Thank you, fourth grade students. I love hearing your responses. I think one thing that Mike likes to use as an artistic medium, meaning like painting or sculpture, I think one thing Mike uses is light as a tool to make his work. How about that hairdo? Now I really am excited to show you these sculptures. These are Mike's skeletal robots. This one has like a lightsaber, which I think they've used to decapitate this one. It's made of a lot of recycled parts. Look at those brains are just wove uh, is just a uh, wire that Mike wove up and bent until it until it formed a brain. Oh, it's got some cool shades. Hello. So Mike finds his material, a lot of it comes from these buildings. And then he buys wood and, you know, like found some uh, golf balls 
or these are, are bottles, right? Crashed off bottles. So it's like very common everyday objects can become something totally unique and turn into something completely unexpected. They have kind of range of motion. I mean, look at that knee joint. How cool is that? I feel like they should all start playing music or something, or they could be in a band. So this is a welding area where we can work in metal. The hotel is over a hundred years old. Actually, all of these buildings are, and that's a good question. So they were built in 1914. So we're in 2020, so that's 106 years ago. Now we're entering into the building that was originally a Ford garage. So the kind of place you would go to get your car serviced. And then, a microbrewery came and made beer in this space and they did a lot of improvements on it. So you see it's not quite as run down as the hotel is. And then that was left empty for 20 years until we moved in here. Although more recently, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Denzel Washington movie, The Book of Eli, that was filmed in Carrizozo and they used uh, this space to, to help stage the movie. So isn't this a cool space? This is my studio. Yes, yeah, so I we have a question on how long I've been living here. And I moved here 13 years ago. And so, and I moved from New York City. And I think that's the question I get asked the most is why did I choose to move from New York to Carrizozo, New Mexico? And there's a lot of different reasons for that. Um, but I definitely think that being, being with Mike, having, um, having the ability to just trying to switch my camera so you can see me, hi. Um, so I moved here because I felt as if this being in a very small town with a lot of space could allow me to really be the artist that I wanted to be. And I really love working in, in printmaking, in painting, but as Lisa was saying in the introduction, um, I'm answering the question of what material I like working with in the most. And I really love mixing a whole variety of material. Like I love it when, when a work just kind of like comes together, all these different pieces that you never thought would be in, in a work, all of a sudden come, come together and become something. So, uh, but I do feel like printmaking is really is really my love, and I will show you I'll show you a little bit about how uh, how I make prints. Like for example, this this design on my shirt is printed. Or right, let's go look at this painting behind me. Okay. I wonder what you guys see. This is my most recent work. I just finished this. A moth, that's exactly right. Yes. And the moth 
is being seen kind of in two different ways, right? We see it through a magnifying glass and then the figure is looking at it too. So the moth up there is painted and this moth is a print. So two different ways of communicating, two different processes or materials. And I'll show you more about printing. And then the hair is all printed and then glued together. Like that hand being painted. And then the landscape. Now, when I was making this, the, the fire started raging and it sort of feels like the light in this painting reminds me of the way the sun, the, the way the sun looks when it's setting when the wildfires were happening. Thank you for the comment about the hair. I like the way that it turned out. So I'll show you, ah, I have a question of how do I decide when a piece is finished? You know, to be honest, I feel like I never do know when a piece is finished. Um, it, I, I, I'll keep working on things until, until they leave my, my site or until they, uh, uh, go, until they go into a show or someone buys it. And, the, um, so to finish a work, it never feels like it's finished. I just wanna keep working and keep working on things. Like even now I look at this painting and I think of things I might, I might change. Uh, so, but, but at the same time, there is something to where when a work of art feels like it comes alive, when I feel like it looks back at me almost, um, almost like I'm having a conversation with it, that's generally when I think, ah, okay, maybe this is done because it's sort of like talking back to me. Um, and I got another question on if, if the spaces inspire the work. And the answer is definitely yes. I, I've changed uh, the, my scale. Like I've made these really large pieces that are like, the size of buildings because I've been in this space. Oh, you guys hear that? That's a train. So Carrizozo was founded as a, as a railroad town. And that's why, it, why it's here. So the train rolls by the town. Um, I got another question on how many pieces do I work on in a given day? And I'd say it varies a lot. But the one thing that's really consistent is that we work every day of the week. We come to our we come to the studio twice a day and work generally four to three hours uh, in two shifts. So put it put in an eight hour day. And in that day, we'll play ping pong almost every day. And sometimes I'm working on clothing um, rather than just working on on visual art. And I feel like I've been an artist since I was in middle school. I kind of, I took a, a printmaking class and like I said, I'll show you more about printmaking, but I took this class and it felt like this was the language that I understood. There was something about making art that felt more true to myself than words could ever, could ever be. So here are some clothes that I make. It's a hat, it's a dress. Here's a jacket. This one's nice in the summertime when it's real hot. Ooh, I'm glad to hear that you'd wear that, I love it. So this piece, is a jumpsuit, right? Uh, pretty cool, almost like a superhero. 
And then on the back, it's got a solar panel and that has a cord and then I can plug in my cell phone and when I'm walking around in this outfit, I can charge my cell phone. So Beth's class asked, when, when do I know when to start a new piece? Uh, and that is, that is sometimes hard for me to, to get started. And I do find that when, once I'm going on a piece, that, that feels really good. But getting started often happens with some kind of spark of inspiration. So for example, this piece, the stained glass window panels on the left and the right, I made years ago. And then I just had them around my studio for years. And at one point I pulled them out and I thought, oh, I could make a window around these windows so that there would be two ways of seeing. One way to see the actual stained glass and then one to see what's outside. Oh, I love this question of what's your favorite thing to do to get in the mood to make art? Ah, that's so perfect. Um, I, I find that dancing is a really good way, which is its own kind of form of art. But I think that there's something about moving that can be uh, really, that can really help me then get focused in the studio. And then the other thing I would say is that nature, like going on a walk and being outside uh, and we walk to the studio every day and just kind of feeling the light on my skin. Oh, wow. You know what this uh, train has? Our windmill towers that's going by out there. Do, how, uh, do you more art or custom clothing i definitely do more do more art i don't i only make clothes really for myself uh it's just too hard to do to have a full-on kind of clothing company or something so this is a good example of how i start a piece uh i, I this is something i'm working on you can see this isn't yet attached so again i sort of started by making these stained glass pieces. Like I would have this weird squash thing and I glued that down and then I painted around it and just kept adding stuff and adding stuff and then adding this, what's called the leading around each object so that it looks like stained glass. But then I was like, oh, I know. I want this to be like a broken stained glass window with a view of Carrizozo in the background. So that's what I'm setting out to make, painting these buildings. And then it's gonna look like, you know, this is like broken and these are shards of glass. So I just get started by uh, really just getting one piece and adding it to another. It's sort of like uh, building, building Lego box or something. And definitely I'm always combining one, one piece into another. That's the thing I love about art making is where this one thing you're like, oh, I don't know what this is. And then you put it next to something else and all of a sudden it just clicks. It's like, whoa, th look, there's this new thing that's emerging. Here's an example of something really large that I'm working on when somebody asked about if the spaces inspire the work. I feel like this, this is gonna be a very large kind of figurative piece. I just pan around a little bit. Here's kind of another thing where we love having life kind of thriving within the studio. This is a jasmine plant and this year it's been trailing up, looking for more and more light.
what do you do with the rest of your day after you're done working at art? Well, we, we generally stop at five o'clock and go home and make, uh, make dinner and sit outside usually. And, you know, the thing is, is that we, we tend to go to bed at like 8.30 or nine o'clock. And so we get up really early. So by the time five comes around, we're near the very end of our day. What do you guys see here? One thing I like to do in my art is have things that place it in today. Like this cell phone picture. Yes, we have people. Have you, have I ever, okay, I have a question if I've ever made a sunset painting. Um, if I ever do, the sunset is kind of part of something else. I've never done just a sunset, um, but I do like to have, you know, kind of like a window in which there's a sunset. I mean, I feel like that moth with the magnifying glass that's on the right there, but that's kind of like a sunset. And then we have these bird, uh, these moth mobiles. Okay, I have a question about how do I promote myself as an artist? And then I missed the end of that question. But um, I think that, you know, when I left New York, I really felt like it was hard to promote myself as an artist and that I wasn't in the kind of center of the art world. But as time went on, I, I found that you just have to keep the relationships that are important to you going and be and work hard and show up for your art every day. And that I find that things, things seem to come naturally from that. So this is an example of something that Mike and I have collaborated on. And I love things that have motion or movement to them. Yes, we love inviting people over to our spaces and we love having events. Um, and we look forward to when that starts up again, but it's nice to do it virtually if we can't do it otherwise. We have an artist in residency program. So we bring artists here. Uh, some of you might know Roz. Uh, she, she's come out uh, to Carrizozo and did an artist in residency. And so that's a really important part of what we do. And then we also have our art organization, Momozozo, and we're open on Fridays from 12 to one. Do I do art on people is another question. Yes, I have, uh, I have painted people and, uh, and done body paint, if that's what you mean. And oftentimes I'll do that and then I'll shoot a video and I'll, and I'll make that as a video. So look at this piece. We've got what it looks like a landscape, uh, a, a tapestry or a carpet. Mm. Well, Beth asked, do I ever make art about people or us? And this is right here. What we're looking at is an example of it. So you look at it and it looks like patterns and stuff, but do you guys see anything in there? Maybe see something that doesn't quite belong, that looks a little bit different. Look, there's a little car tucked back behind the painting. And then there's a figure there. And that's, this painting is about Mike and I on our first date. Mike took me on a drive into the most beautiful place in the mountains. And this painting reminded me of that. 
So Mike's going to take over on the on the uh, camera, and I'm going to just show you a little bit about printmaking. So, as I say, I make a lot of my own clothes, and I use printmaking a lot to do that. So this is a shirt that I made, and this is the block that then I printed to make this shirt. This piece fits in there. So I just wanted to show you guys what, that, what that's like. So I've got this block here. And I wonder how many of you have ever done any printmaking. And it's a, it's a piece of wood. And then I carve away. All right, and now I'm gonna print it. First, I have to ink it up. And then take it over here to my printing press. And then voila. And the cool thing is, is I can print as many copies as I want. And so I can make a whole wall covering full of them, or I could make cards for all my friends and send them to each of them. So printmaking, you know, maybe you guys don't have a whole press set up or something, but you can do rubbings, which are similar. So if you have something that you want to print, you can take a piece, you can take a pencil and do a rubbing. So you can make art with all kinds of materials. You can make prints from all kinds of materials. You don't need a big fancy studio to do it. So you guys, we wanna take you outside because part of what we love about these buildings is not just the amazing space to make art, but also these kind of grounds to be outside and to be in nature. Okay, thank you, Lisa. I was just wondering how much time we have left. It's gone so quickly. <laughs> so this is our recycling pit. We don't have any glass recycling in New Mexico. So we invite people to come and bring glass. And then we play this game where you try to get the bottle Woo! in the in the bowl. <laughs> okay. I like to get like a running start that usually helps. Woo! Yeah, I did it. So we're gonna go building I want to show you guys. So we have the hotel. This was my studio. And then this is the Lyric Theater, the back of it. And this is a, a hedge that Mike cuts. It's like our beast. This is a sacred deltura plant. These rock balances. Oh, and here's Carrizo grass. This is what the town's named after. Oh, 
Fine. Here we go to the Lyric Theater. So we bought these buildings four years ago. And this theater was first an opera house. Well, thanks so much for joining us, you guys. I know we're gonna have to sign off soon. So I wanted a chance to say goodbye as I show you our theater. Those are cactus people prints that I did. Oh, uh, thanks, yeah. I think what sparked my interest in becoming an artist in the first place was a desire to connect to my creative self all the time, to not feel like I had to separate my creativity from my life. I wanted it to be all encompassing. So this is this hawk mobile that we made. Take you around to the front and then say goodbye. I'm looking forward to spending some more time with some of you and for the other artist presentations. If you ever come to Carrizoza, we'll give you some popcorn. <laughs> so here we are outside. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs> no, thank you. Paula, thank you so much. What a beautiful, wonderful experience, I think, um, for everybody. Um, thanks so much to the fourth graders in Ms. Bulger's class. We really appreciate you all, appreciate you all coming too. Um, everybody, Paula will be joining us two more times over the school year um, for different types of public presentations as part of this uh, lecture series. So you will have a chance to get to know her a little bit better, maybe Mike as well. Um, please feel free to join us again next week at the same time for the next live stream um, and presentation from one of our artists visiting artist lecture series. And please feel free to check out our website, ksmocha.com uh, for the full schedule and to get a sense of what else we have going on. Um, thanks again so much, Paula. We hope you have a really great day. Bye everybody, have a great day. Thank you.